Everyone, welcome to a new edition of ETS Chalk Talk. Today we are out in the Sunshine State in Fort Lauderdale. Looks like a nice day out there. It's Coach Harriet and the Florida State champs from St. Thomas Aquinas. How are you, Coach? I'm doing well, Brock. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Definitely. Well, let's rewind to different times. September or maybe late August 2019, Concord, California. You guys make the cross-country trek to the famed De La Salle High School. Uh, California versus Florida matchup, super memorable game. I remember being on the sidelines uh, after I met you there and Antonio Brown comes walking in and just mayhem lets loose. Uh, we got HBO film crew there. What do you remember about playing De La Salle last year? Memor memorable moments. It's a great way to start to kick off the season for, you know, any level, whether youth league, high school, college, um, NFL, it, you know, two prominent programs going at it. The, the, the game uh, started off exciting from, from beginning to end. And, uh, it's definitely one one of those uh, matchups to remember. They have a phenomenal program. They do a great job, and our guys went out there to take care of business. And we were fortunate enough to 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 leave leave uh, South Florida and go represent over on the, the the West Coast and and return with a victory. So we're we're grateful. Yeah, we were joking around earlier about it. It was it was a kind of crazy environment, especially when uh, HBO Hard Knocks film crew came in and they're on your sideline. And you you said like you didn't even know he was there. You're locked into the, the game. The the you game just, was so the game was so intense. I mean that that um, yeah. you're on the you're on the edge of your seat, and you know that's what uh, the the Paragon Group and ESPN want to promote. They want to make sure they have those 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 uh, fiery type of matchups. And um, you know we were on the edge of our seat. We were coaching on until the, the the very very bitter end. So when Antonio came onto the scene. I didn't even realize he was there until I saw some of the highlights on, on Sports Center. Yeah. And last year you guys went on to win the state championship. That's one of the things we're we're highlighting all 50 state champions across the country on Chalk Talk. And uh Aquinas is a program with a ton of rich history. Why has mm -hmm. it been a program with so much success? You won a state championship there as a player and, and how all of the success. I mean, I, th I think the success, first of all, has contributed to God. You know, I think we have a strong faith, faith base there, a, a rich tradition, Roman Catholic tradition. And, um, you know, we have a, a, a belief in a faith that I, that I think is difficult to combat. Um, the other reason is obvious, George Smith, the, the athletic director and a longtime head coach at, at St. Thomas. He was my coach there. And he, he's uh, been at St. Thomas for over 48 years now. Um, he coached, he was a coach wow. from 19, I think 75 um, through the mid 2000s. So right, right around 34 years, he, he was a head coach and he was able to establish this platform. Um, and uh, he's done a really, he's done a really, really good job of um, facilitating the the need for you know, you know, just giving your best effort and and uh, being a pioneer with regards to establishing a national presence and competing against other national national programs and um, you know making sure that you know each and every player has an opportunity to further edu their education um, at the collegiate level. So we're very family oriented type of uh, organization. Um, you know, a, a lot of, I think we have a reputation that it's mostly about um, winning championships or or procuring talent or developing talent. And that's just a small part of it. I think the secret, the real secret at St. Thomas is is our faith and our family environment and uh, how, how we celebrate our, our, our students there and encourage them to um, be good people and do the right thing. And as a result, that transitions into the classroom and and obviously uh, onto their onto their uh, activity of interest for in our in our case it's football. Yeah, yeah. These prominent national powers, you know, De La Salle. I've been talking to you know. I just talked to Hoover and Chandler in Arizona, and these guys that are top ten perennial max preps, top twenty five schools. Sometimes get the I guess reputation that it is just about championships or recruiting or or, you know, having success. You played at Aquinas, you're coaching there now. You, you've talked about all the success, but 
what's it been transitioning from a player to then having your collegiate experience coaching at university and then being back at Aquinas as, as head coach? It's an, it's an unbelievable journey. It's an unbelievable experience, especially since I grew up in South Florida, watching Aquinas as an elementary school student, wanting to go play there, had an opportunity to play there, had some success, moved on to, and, and uh, went to college, played in college, came back, and um, we started coaching at university school, started that program in 2006, and then went to be a college coach and just felt like my biggest impact and passion was on the high school level. Um, and uh, St. Thomas opened up and the rest is history. You know, they, you know, I had a couple of conversations with, um, you know, the administration and Coach Smith and, and uh, they welcomed me with open arms. So, you know, it's been an unbelievable experience and um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have an opportunity to, to, uh, to lead the program that has done so much for me. Yeah, there's, there's a difference on this side of it you know, being the person in charge as opposed to being the recipient as a player. What have you, what have you learned since you've taken over as head guy? Oh, there's so much to learn, you know, from, from our head administrators and we're getting a chance to work uh, closely with, with coach Smith, just, um, you know, under understanding the, the industry and um, making sure that you're, you're uh, setting the right example with regards to um, putting your best foot forward and, and modeling what it means to be an exaggerated role model, doing the right thing, being a good person, and helping your your players and other students and the coaches that you're affiliated with understand the value and the benefit of um, making you know making appropriate decisions and uh, serving the Lord and and um, it's been it's been a po- it's just been all positive since since I've been at St. Thomas. You know every every organization has its challenges, but you know we do a good job of collaborating with one another and. And, and uh, realizing, you know, um, adversity breeds opportunities for you to get motivated and, and encouraged and, and um, make some significant um, adjustments. And, and uh, we, look at, we look at problems uh, as an opportunity to, to, you know, find results and answers. And um, that's kind of the culture that has been, that's been created there. And I think that's, a, that's an integral part of, of the success that we've been able to accumulate over the years. Yeah, definitely during these times, using, using adversity for opportunities. You talked about exaggerated um, kind of modeling and exaggerated uh, mentorship. And can you mm-hmm. kind of expound on that or explain that more? I mean, it's part, part of one of my coaching philosophies. You know, I, I, I think that um, coaching football and playing football, that's inevitable. You know, you, you, something that we all enjoy. What is the extra that you're you're bringing to the table? And I I believe that you know positioning yourself to be a, an exaggerated role model is mm-hmm. at only advantageous to the development of the child of that, that person who looks up to you that you 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 have an opportunity to influence on a daily basis. And for me, being an exaggerated role model means that I signed up to be the 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 epitome of what it what it what it looks and sounds like to be a good person. And, and do the right thing on, on a regular basis. And um, our players seem to be receptive to it. Our, our coaches um, enjoy it. We, we, don't, we don't cuss or, at our kids. We don't, we don't belittle them. I think it, it creates a, a state of confusion because here you are telling them what it means to be successful and how, how to um, establish a sense of uh, discipline with regards to integrity. Um, you have to put forth certain objectives in order to accomplish uh, some, some of those some of those goals or those um, behavioral requirements. How you want to be perceived by other people. So we put a, a, a nice platform in place in order for them to um, uh, understand what it means to to be successful. But before you can even do that, they need to they need to believe in you. They need to have a, a substantial amount of admiration and respect for you. Um, so you, you know, I believe, um, you know, modeling what it, what it means to, to do the right thing and be a good person uh, takes takes precedence over trying to esta- trying to establish a certain plan. They, they, the, the kids have to know that you care about them, you have their best interests at heart, and you're making the, the you know the necessary sacrifices in a world full of temptation to 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 ensure 
um, their their well being and their their best interests. And I think just from a humanistic standpoint, they appreciate it. Their parents appreciate it. They see value in that. And so when you you are educating or counseling or guiding them, they're more receptive to whatever it is you have to say. Hmm. My father. Uh was a big Tony Dungy guy and he coached me and he was on the sidelines at the ESPN game when y'all played Dale South. And, oh, yeah. and we actually a couple of different times, cause it was a, it was a chaotic environment and game. It's such a small stadium. You guys are probably used <laughs> to bigger environments It's right there on the road. And mm-hmm. we, we, we mentioned it a couple of times. We're like, man, this head coach is super poised. He is super even demeanored. And we were, we always are very cognizant of that. Mm-hmm. How do you, especially during COVID, especially during a crisis like this, um, how do you re- maintain poise? And where have you learned that? Like, what did you read? <laughs> what are your sources of encouragement? Or how were you mentored into that poise? Um, prayer, a lot of prayer. <laughs> okay, I love it. <laughs> um, you know, we, uh, you know, the, the 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 book that I'm most familiar with is, is the Bible. I think it has, a, you know, a tremendous amount of information in there with regards to uh, guiding you from a social emotional standpoint. I think it's important as a leader um, that you need to make sure you stay poised and you uh, keep your cool and and um, just make sure that you're you're instructing from a benevolent standpoint. Um, I, I think I'm a firm believer that you get more out of people when you show love and encouragement and, and support and you show them that you care than, um, you know, the, the punitive, the punitive fair type of uh, tactics. Um, I'm not really interested in that. I believe in treating others how you want to be treated. I feel that when someone's talking to me with a, with a certain level of respect and, and love, um, I think it's, I, I'm, I enjoy that. I enjoy that type of interaction. So I, I, I feel like it's necessary to, to interact with my coaches and, and encourage them to do the same with, with our players. So, um, you know, one of, one of my um, objectives as the head coach is to make sure that I'm coaching my coaches to, to, uh, to treat our players with uh, dignity and respect and, and encourage them to do the same on to their, their, their peers and, and, uh, you know, their, their uh, community members. And it's been good. They, you know, they, they represent us well on and off the field. I can, you know, genuinely say that. And then when they move on and go on to college and, and out into the world, you know, some of them have an opportunity to play in the NFL and continue their dreams. But the majority of them move on and they're, they, they're champions in life. And that's more validating, gratifying than winning any game. Thanks so much for sharing that, man. I think it's, it's a truth and there's a lot of wisdom in it. And so I, I appreciate you being open about that. Um, we're going to have some fun, a little two minute drill action right here. Uh, and I know a lot of your followers probably know you, but they might not know your favorite meal. They might not know your favorite song. And so we'll, uh, we'll oh, learn boy. a little bit more about <laughs> coach Harriet and then we'll get into some college recruiting which I'm really excited for because I know that this is a different time for that as well. Okay, mm-hmm. rapid fire. Here we go. First and 10, what have you done that I should do? Some experience. Um, what, have, what have I done that you should do? Uh, as, you know, recently, my most, I, I think one of the most uh, – gratifying things that I've recently done is, is help start a, fu- a fundraiser. Obviously during this time, it, it was um, a great opportunity when my friends came my way and said he wanted to establish a fundraiser for, want to establish a fundraiser for our frontline workers. And that was a tremendous undertaking. And um, we uh, partnered up with our team doctor. His uh, organization is called Charity for Champions. And, um, you know, just being able to serve people in need and see how elated they are when, when um, you're providing for their, their, their needs is, it's a very difficult um, thing to explain. You know, you kind of, it's one of those situations where you truly have to be there. So, you know, I would definitely advise you, man, to get yourself involved in some sort of uh, uh, missionary work or, or, or fundraiser for charity and um, see how, how giving really impacts those that are in need. Yeah. 
I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds cliche a little bit, but it's the truth, man. I mean, a lot of people, That's great. A lot of people give, but when you're when you're actually uh, uh, helping um, establish or coordinating the actual um, platform to give, it's a it's a it's a lot of work, but it's it's definitely gratifying. Yeah, more blessed to give than receive. Best game you've ever been a part of? Ooh, oh man. You know, uh, there's there there's so many so many games. I, I would have to say though, my my first year coaching, um, you know, when I was at university school, we took on a challenge. They that school never played football, and ninety five percent of the kids never played football. They didn't know how to put pads on, helmet or anything. And um, you know, the first game of the season we played. You know, it was you know we took a we took a, a loss. It was a it was a it was a kickoff classic, and um, we went out. We went on to win the remainder of our games. The last game of the season was against a, a team that you know was typically in the playoffs. Um, Miami Country Day, a strong team, and our guys went out there and gave it gave it their all. And uh, you know, we we hit a forty eight yard field goal for the win which was just unbelievable to me because the game went back and forth and, um, you know, it was my first year, year coaching and, uh, you know, it was, it was a, it was a great experience. And after that, I've had multiple games. There's, there's state, there's state championships, one, one and loss that, um, have been, you know, have been, uh, exciting and, and, and memorable. So I've been extremely fortunate to, to, to be a part of some, um, historical moments. Yeah. If I were to, peek into your Spotify or iTunes, what song is on repeat or artist is on repeat <laughs> right now? The quarantine playlist. Right now, right now, the quarantine playlist, I would probably, I'd probably have to say some Bob Marley. Hey, Bob there Marley's we go. On there. You know, I'm originally from Jamaica. A lot of people don't know, but I'm from Jamaica. Okay. I was born in Jamaica and uh, that's where my family um, is from. That's where I was raised. And I came to the United States at an early age and went back to Jamaica and then and then came back here and finished oh, wow. middle school, middle school and high school here. And that's how I ended up at St. Thomas. But yeah, Bob Marley would be on some repeat. Um, okay. Keith Sweat, some some old some old school Keith Sweat, some early '90s Keith Sweat. Okay. Maybe, All right. Maybe maybe uh, maybe some Jodeci. So the vibe the, the vibe is a chill vibe right now. All right, it's man. A, it's a it's yeah. a peaceful peaceful vibe. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's 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 got the tranquil tranquilo uh, palm trees in the background, a little bit of peace and calm. I like it, man. Um, all right, uh, what accomplishment are you most proud of? Um, my devotion to to God. I think that's an accomplishment, especially in a, a world full of temptation. I think it's really difficult to um, genuinely stand in front of of your 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 family and those that you lead and love as a as a as a faithful devoted um uh, servant of the lord and a and a devoted husband and father i, I think those that that's the, the the two things that i think i'm most proud of i, I really appreciate the opportunity and and engaging um you know uh, young men to be to be productive members of society and and, and champions later on as they grow within their life I'm grateful for that opportunity, but I think my greatest accomplishment up to this point is is, is not the coach of the year or any other accolades that I received is, is really being devoted to God and, 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 and my family. Yeah. Well, I just commend you, man. There's a lot of different leaders out there. There's a lot of different leaders who win out there. Uh, but the way that you lead, I experienced it as a stranger and now getting to know you a little bit, uh, it's, it's inspirational. It's really cool, man. So keep on, it. keep it on. I know it's you. sometimes you get weary of doing good. So don't get weary because you're doing good work. I appreciate um, those encouraging words. I receive it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. My, my um, favorite book, my favorite book right here, man, the Bible. It yep. took me a while. You know, I, a lot of people, a lot it's of a big people one. talk about it. A lot of people talk about hey, your favorite book, and I've 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 had I've had uh, the good fortune to read a lot of books and share books with with my um with my coaches, and we will do a a book uh you know like a book reading throughout you know throughout the summer, and then review it throughout the season, and um, we do a summer reading with our players. But this right here, where since COVID nineteen, I've been able to get back 
uh, to the Bible, and it's been um, it's been it's been nothing but a, a true blessing. It helps keep keep focus, and um, you know, re- help, you, puts things into a clear perspective. So, anybody out there listening, I definitely encourage you to get back into the good book, get, get those Bible verses there. They're uh, they hit home, and you yeah. know uh, it's 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 right on it's right on time. Yeah, no doubt. Well, we uh, we are in strange times. We're in new times, different times, and the recruiting process is constantly evolving. The mm-hmm. invention of social media and Twitter becoming so prevalent years ago, but we've never seen this, uh, at least in our lifetime. So. Um, I know that you've had some pretty interesting experiences. I want to start, you know, looking at COVID through the high school lens. You as a head coach, what has it been like? They're trying, like you, you alluded to just now, trying times. It's been um, extremely difficult, but I, I'm a firm believer that where there's adversity, that it, it provides opportunity for you to um, become motivated. And, and um, I think crisis breeds opportunity. So. You know, it's um, it's been challenging, but you, you know, this is this is a time where you kind of you know you evaluate what's really happening within your 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 circle and your community and how best you can um, you you how best you can help. And I think uh, adjusting, improvising, and and adapting is is important. I yep. think it's important to do that, especially right now. And you know, we we're gonna we're gonna be establishing some new normals now, and it's um. An opportunity for us as a, a community to become innovative and um, work in collaboration with each other and not take take things for granted. I think, in, you know, working from an interdependent, family-oriented team standpoint is something we need to get back to. I, I, I'm gr- I am grateful for the advancements in technology, but it's, it's caused uh, um, some social-emotional division um, mm-hmm. over, over the years. I think um, interpersonal skill sets have diminished significantly. Um, you know, unfortunately, there are some tra- tragic things happening with COVID-19, um, but from a positive standpoint, it's bringing, it's bringing people together and helping, um, helping us realize that our greatest resource in, in, in this life on this earth that, that we know it isn't, um, it, it isn't software, it isn't an airplane, it's not a car, you know, it's, it's not things, it's us, people. We're the greatest resource on this earth, and I think sometimes it takes a, a, a tragic situation to help us to realize and reflect on what really matters and what we what we've been taking for granted. We've been taking each other for granted, and we need to be there for one another. We all have strengths and weaknesses, and we're able to um, we have the ability, the, the, the social emotional skill set to to uh, complement each other and become compatible and um, work, in, work in a level of interdependence where my strengths complement your weaknesses and your, your strengths complement my weaknesses and we work in collaboration for the greater good. Um, I think there's, a, there's opportunity here to get back to some of that humanistic hmm. value. Hmm. Yeah, and you, you talked about, you talk about collaboration, Coach Shaw, and, and it makes a lot of sense in senior background, Boston University, St. Thomas Aquinas, you're an educated intellectual dude. And Villanova, you said you, I graduated from Villanova though. Oh, that's right. I'll, I, I'll edit that out. I don't want to, I don't want to get that messed up. <laughs> no, nah, uh, no, nah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm proud, to, I'm, pr- I'm, I'm proud to have an opportunity to go to Boston University. That's where I met my wife. Without, without awesome. Boston University, we don't have five kids right now. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Coach Shaw, and then you're talking about being at Purdue too. What have those conversations oh, no, Van, been like? Vanderbilt. Oh, it was Vanderbilt. Was, it, was, oh, okay. it was with Coach Coach Mason Vanderbilt. But okay. I do talk. I, I I talk to Purdue to Purdue coaches, and I'm always open to talking and having conversations um, with with college coaches about the recruiting process because it's constantly evolving. Um, yeah. More so, more so now than ever, um, be, be, because there isn't um, a direct interaction. Everything that we're doing is uh, through through um, you know technology. Which is which is great, um, but like I said earlier, the value of of coaching or educating is hands on the hands on experience and interaction with each other, which is not we're not able to do right now. So I've been fortunate to to um, to to help advise and and consult with uh, Coach Shaw and his his staff at at, at Stanford and and uh, Coach Mason at at Vanderbilt and a number, and a number of other coaches, University of Miami, Manny Diaz, we 
sit there and talk about what what's transpired with regards to the approval process and how you know I can best help them um, from a high school coach's perspective. You know, we take a lot of pride in in making sure that our players are are uh, recruited and that they're evaluated and um, they have an opportunity to showcase their talent so they can further their education, you know, use football as a vehicle to, um, to pursue their, their, their inevitable and ultimate goals, dreams, and aspirations. So, you know, the, the, the college coaches were, you know, obviously hit, you know, from, from the side with this COVID-19, like the rest of us, um, obviously it put a, a, a put in, made a, a tremendous um, impact on them with regards to how to evaluate their talent moving forward for the next the, the next class of uh, 2021, 2022, and 2023 student athletes. And um, I'm just grateful that I have an opportunity to share with them how you know they can they can, they can best. Um, you know, uh, maximize their opportunity, their recruiting opportunities. And a lot of it is just uh, doing these virtual tours, you know, get, mm-hmm. getting on, getting, getting these, uh, these uh, recruits on a virtual tour with their parents. And um, some of them have done a phenomenal job. They I actually, they make it feel like they're actually on an official visit. They're taking you through campus. Their um, pre-recording um, little highlight videos or messages through their through their stadium or their indoor facility or their strength coach or their academic advisor. You know they're taking you through a whole session and um, and making you feel makes the players feel like they're there. So what what what's happening? Which I don't I I don't think um, the college coaches anticipated was the quick the the, the quick. Uh, turnover with regards to commitment players want to commit they don't want to wait they're, they're hedging their, they're hedging their bets they know we're in a we're in um a time of uncertainty so no one knows exactly if we're going to play or we're not going to play everyone's being optimistic obviously um but reality the reality is no one thought we would be here um sitting at home quarantined months later so yeah. you know the season's supposed to start a few a few months from now. The reality of that um, happening is the reality is uncertainty. You yeah. know, so players don't want to wait for a coach to say, you know, we're going to recruit you through the season. Well, you you know, in college, they're going to start making, um, they're going to start planning. And I know that SEC the SEC is voting soon, which other conferences may or may not follow. And then there, there obviously will be some conferences that w- won't have certain schools um, participating. But they're also talking about moving those fall sports to spring sports. So there, there's just mm-hmm. there's just so much that we're unaware of. So the players um, who are fortunate to have um, offers are cashing in on them. Yeah. And you and Brock, you and I both know, you know, it's very obvious that when a player commits or when a player has an offer from a college, he's in the driver's seat for the most part, especially when they commit, you know, um, the word commitment doesn't necessarily mean what it used to be. They, they should create another definition for yeah. student, student athlete commitment because it, you know, they, they're, they're not committed. They're not committed yeah. until they sign that NLI. And, yeah. um, you know, most, most players, will unless it's their dream school or 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 unless it's the most prominent school that's recruiting them they're gonna they're gonna keep their options open and that's where yeah. the term d that's where the term decommitment came from which was never a word until up till probably about 10 years ago you know it yeah. wasn't even the definition but you know that's um that's kind of where we are and i've been fortunate to talk to a number of coaches about this this process and what's in their best interest. If you have a student athlete that you're on the fence on, and um, you know you're recruiting you're recruiting certain guys, and you have a guy that wants to commit, you may want to let them commit because somebody yeah. somebody else, especially the BCS schools, uh, BCS schools, whoever they're recruiting, the the likelihood of several other BCS schools recruiting that player is high. Yeah. So the probability of that 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 
you know, that, that school being their um, only offer isn't realistic. So if you have a couple players that are high on your board, then you need to make sure that you uh, practice due diligence and get them signed up, especially, especially academic institutions like Stanford and Vanderbilt. You know, those are, yeah. those are, those are Stanford, Vanderbilt, you know, Michigan, you know, Wake Forest, Duke, Northwestern, those are, are strong academic schools. And they don't necessarily go by the NCAA sliding scale standard. They have their own academic admission standard. So it's difficult for them to find um, strong students that are potential draft picks. That's yeah. what BCS schools are looking for, yeah. you know, to compete and to, 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 to win, to ensure that they're winning, winning games and the, the winning, winning those games ensures that they keep their job. That's, you know, yeah. that's, that's as transparent and practical as you can be. So yeah. I try to explain to them that, yeah, it's great that, you know, you want, you, you want to entice kids to come to your school and think about academics and things of that nature, which is awesome. That's, you know, the, the, the ultimate goal. At the end of the day, you're a football coach and you have to win games. And yeah. there aren't a lot, there aren't, there aren't a lot of scholar BCS athletes out there. They're not a lot. Not yeah. that play at that, not that play at that, that, that high level. So the few that are out there, I try to encourage them to, you know, jump on them. Cause they usually, you know, Stanford and Vanderbilt usually have a very meticulous, um, conservative recruiting, um, process. And, and unfortunately that's something that they, they have to, um, manage at this point, which could be well, difficult. But I, I remember, you know, as a player, I got recruited by the Ivies. I ended up going to UC Davis. But I remember just learning about the Ivy Index or, you know, learning yeah. about these different the bands, things that the they band have. system. <laughs> it's so the interesting. Because, because, but you're talking about, you know, schools like Stanford and Vanderbilt. Like you're saying, man, I, I, I can't play there. I wasn't athletic or talented enough to play there. And that demographic that has the academics and the high level athleticism is pretty freaking small compared to sure. the rest of the, yeah. Compared yeah. to the rest of those BCS schools, like you're saying. So if you're to, if you're to talk to one of those kids, what kind of advice are you giving to your players and any other players um, during this time? Right now I'm, to, I'm, I'm advising my players and my parents and take this process very serious because fortunately there's, there are a lot of recruiting services out there um, on a number of, of uh, services like 24-7 sports and so forth have been able to provide um, uh, some guidance or, or, or profiles for college coaches and for, for high school kids. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a difficult, you know, transition right now for, for everyone. So I'm, I'm advising players who are used to getting attention from these recruiting services and the media and you know they 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 uh they get a sense of um gratification from that a, a sense of relevance and they like they, they kind of just like to go through the recruiting process and what I was yeah. telling coach Mason and coach Shaw I said guys most of these kids that are recruiting at the high level very few of them are kind of confused they know the two or three schools they really want to go to out of the 30 schools that have offered them they yeah. know you know but they'll go through the process because it feels good and it gives them some it, it helps them build their resume which right now because of our the advancements in technology and the 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 the, the, the uh, platform of of recruiting a, a lot of that information you know carries over to the NFL for some of these kids so they got they 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 were they were identified as a sophomore or sometimes even a freshman in high school and they were they were tracked all the way through through college to the NFL. So it was good information to have. Um, but but right now what I'm telling my parents and players is that like, you don't have time to be um you know recruited and and uh you know glorified or you know just enamored over at, at this time. We focus on which schools you like yeah. and you need to talk talk to those schools and you you probably should you probably should commit because that's kind of the trend right now and yeah. you will you will lose your spot and then you know as many 
um, BCS type players, there are. There, there are very few take anyway guys. So, you know, some of these bigger BCS schools like the Clemsons or the Alabamas or, you know, these bigger conferences, they always have a couple scholarships left over where you, uh, you have a take anyway guy. But the portal has thrown a monkey wrench into that. And mm-hmm. the, fifth year se- the fifth year senior has thrown a monkey wrench into that. Mm-hmm. So they're they're, they're kind of saving those few scholarships that they used to save for the take anyway guy for those, those kids that have more experience. They have college experience. And let's be, let's be frank, man. It, you know, our society isn't very forgiving to a coach's development process. If you're not winning within two to three years, you're yeah. looking at a you're looking at a, a severe hot seat within yep. your third 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 to fifth year, and um, so guys, you know co- college coaches understand what they they signed up for, they know what they're up against, and they realize um, that they 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 have to win. So I'm telling the co- I'm telling our players that listen, if you don't take this spot, someone else will take the, take take that yeah. spot, and guess what? They only have a few a few numbers, which the which. Um, most fans and even high school coaches, they don't understand how many scholarships they don't understand, stand the scholar. They don't understand the, the, the scholarship count for colleges. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, the, obviously the max per year is 25. These, those uh, division one schools have 85 full sc- guys on 85 school full scholarships, but they usually have 25 unless, unless they're playing with the numbers with the gray shirt or the blue shirt. Um, which can become a little complicated most, but you're, you know, you're your typical spectator. They don't understand that. So while most high schoolers, they don't understand that. Listen, they're, 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 this school does not have an unlimited number of tight ends an unlimited number of linebackers. They may not even, they may only be taking one tight end, one, one linebacker or one center for that. You know what I mean? So it all depends what their numbers look like. So I try to educate my parents and players from that standpoint. So they, I believe that, that, that knowledge is power. I think knowledge is power and it helps, it helps um, um, establish a sense of understanding and, and a a genuine, uh, as a genuine source of confidence. So if you know what you're getting into, now you can make some educated decisions. So all I do is I try to advise them and then allow them to make their decisions as, as they go. But I would definitely strongly encourage these, uh, these players that have offers to start thinking about committing to them. And, and um, you know, you just move forward, move, move, yeah. move forward and, and hope for, and expect, you know, you got to prepare for the worst, but, we'll, you know, be optimistic, hope for the best, pray for the best, but yeah. be, be, be ready, but be ready to, to um, have to d- deal with a difficult circumstance. Well, it's super, super insightful and, and fascinating stuff. The whole process, like we talked about, is evolving and changing quickly. And I think you offer uh, a voice of quite a bit of knowledge. And I think it will definitely benefit a lot of people to, to hear this. And, and I think if, if I'm a student athlete and I, I just can only remember my experience as like a decent player who had, I thought, a lot of schools recruiting me, and who did not receive an offer because my, my high school coaches were really caring guys, but they, they were young. They were like mm-hmm. late twenties and they gave a lot of energy and passion, but they weren't as familiar with the, the college recruiting process. So they didn't know mm-hmm. how to help. And, and I was being told like, Hey, you're God's gift to the world. You're going to a PAC 12 mm-hmm. school. You, you might go to USC, you know, and, and <laughs> lo and behold, I, I walk on at UC Davis. Yeah. Kind of a little different, but I think it's just, it's, it's really important for for kids to know to know period mm. to understand what what the recruiting process is like nowadays right. and right. every area of the country is different every coach will tell you something different whether they're college or high school but i think getting more information like you said so that these kids can make an educated decision yeah and and now it sounds like urgency is is a key yeah. it's you it's okay to be urgent things. Yeah. yeah, and if if I can offer any advice to those 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 prospective student athletes out there, um, I would definitely advise them to reach out to the schools of their schools of interest. Um, 
even if it, even if it is a reach, you ne- you yeah. never know. You never know. Yep. They have to. You have to realize that these colleges coaches are at a total disadvantage right now. They're at the mercy of um, recruiting services. Recruiting services are at a total disadvantage right now because they're not able to get out there and and um, pra- uh, practice their typical due diligence with regards to profiling and getting information um, out to college coaches. So college coaches want to hear from student athletes right now. They want to hear from you. And they will call your, co- your high school coach and say, hey, listen, so-and-so just called. You know, let me know. Can, can you tell me a little bit about it? So um, you, right now, you, you, you know, you have time. You're not, you shouldn't be out there gallivanting anyway. Be wise with your time. Take advantage of all the resources that are, are, are available to you. Well, more, mostly, obviously, the, the technological resources that you have. Pick up, pick up your, your phone which um, most people in fortunately in our country have pick up the phone, go on the internet, find that, that college coach's number on the internet or his email address. More than likely he's going to be in the office. If not, things are forwarded to his cell phone, call him, call the recruiting coordinator for your area, call your, the guy that coaches your position, call the head coach, you know, all their information is online. Um, Don't wait. Don't wait on yeah. anyone else to do it for you. Get up, get up, and get out there, and uh, and um, you know, let, you know, pursue pr- pursue your your dreams, your goals, and aspirations with regards to football. Yeah. Well, you're helping make dreams happen, and I hope some kids listen to this, and some coaches listen to this, and tell their kids, "Hey, you can do this. You can play college mm-hmm. football. You you Absolutely. can get you know college paid for because of your talent and, and work and I, ethic." So. And yeah. if, I can give, if I can give any more advice, when you guys reach out to these, these coaches, whether it's via text or email, they're not English teachers. They don't need a dissertation, man. They don't need to hear about your whole life story, your, 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 your level of interest, your, your name, your position, um, if there any academic information, height, weight, um, if, you have a, if you have your highlight um, re- available, if you don't have a whole lot of um, footage from the pre from your previous year, which is which is not unusual. So a lot of you guys have been doing a great job of of taking video, posting it on Twitter, posting on Instagram. Take that link and send it over to these college coaches. Let them see you running around. Let them see you working out in your garage in front of your house doing sprints. Let them see you in your grass um, doing going going through uh, you know certain individual drills. Let them see it. And then they can they can they can take that information and that footage and match it up to um, some of this, the some, you know, some of your your uh, your playing footage, and um, you never know. Yeah, remember a coach telling me, "Hey, send me a video of you dunking. I want to see if you can dunk." It's like see, there you just go. just there simple you stuff like that. Simple I would have never like thought that. send the garage workout. I would have never thought that, but it, anything man. is anything is anything during this season. Well. Dude, I'm always going to remember the exaggerated role modeling, and awesome, uh, a lot, a lot of other, a lot of other uh, wisdom nuggets during this. So, thanks so much for your time. Um, thinking about you guys, grateful for you uh, spreading your wisdom to others, and uh, we'll catch up down the road. Thanks, thanks, bro. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Blessings to you and your family. You guys stay safe. You too, man.